We're in the new Hall of Trials boss, Harseti, who's probably going to be here for the next two rotations after this one. And there's a pretty big gap from my score to everyone else's, which is a little bit weird. But there's a few things that I think are probably contributing to this, not just gear gap. And I'll go over them. Also, whatever's going on up here, I'm not doing this. This is a complete pain to tune, it looks like. We're, we're not dealing with that. I will say that Ray and Riza both have team attack percent imprints, which is why they're being used. Riza being a free SSS if you were playing during Full Metal Alchemist collab. And Ray, I'm not imprinting my Ray either, so even if I had even if I did want to run this, I wouldn't use Ray. And credit for finding Loka as the best DPS over Fenris goes to Bill because he, he found my last time and he found Loka this time. Loka, her the way she interacts with this boss just makes it much easier to gear your other units compared to using Fenris. And Fenris does have like one small thing over Loka, which is that he can double S3, but that doesn't really end up mattering. So Loka's just the best DPS, even though this boss was literally made for Fenris. So first up, let's look at Loka. One thing you'll notice is that I'm not using Torrent set anymore. Curtis set is actually the best set because in this fight, just the way it works, Torrent set is very, very, very bad. You can see two Loka be built here. Both have the exact same attack and crit damage. One has Torrent set, one doesn't. Comparing the damage values, it is a massive 0.12% damage increase going from Torrent set or from adding Torrent set. So crit sets is going to be much better value. And the odds are even a broken set is probably going to give you more damage than Torrent unless your best DPS gear happens to be Torrent set. Also, POS isn't the best artifact anymore. It's Dux Noctis. It's just going to vary depending on what your limit break is. Not sure exactly how much you need. If anybody happens to know what the break point is for Dux Noctis being better, please comment it so everybody can know. Dux Noctis at max limit break is 36% attack, and this stacks up pretty much instantly, and it stays stacked. So this will just be active the whole fight by the time it starts battering. Also, the flat attack here is 273, which is much, much higher than POS, which is only 117. Not too big, but it does contribute to the higher damage. Because of the way this fight works, you don't really get that many extra turns or CR pushes. Well, you can't get CR pushes, and you don't really get that many extra turns. So POS stacked really, really slowly, and it won't really be fully stacked until the end of Phase 2 or so. If you don't have either of these artifacts, Cruel Mischief is also really, really bad this rotation for the same reasons that uh, that Torrin said is bad. Any damage boosting artifact is going to be bad. You're going to want to just give her some sort of artifact that boosts attack straight up, like Super Duper Water Shooter. If you have Renewed Will, which I don't have enhanced, I think, but that at plus 15 is also a good option, especially since Loka doesn't have any AoEs in her kit, so you won't have to deal with this RNG CR push or anything. So is there anything that boosts attack would be good as an alternative? Also Misha's works great as well. And then the stats is just max out her damage. I'm missing a bit of crit chance, but you don't crit that many times in this fight, or you don't have that many that important crits rather. There's six important crits where you have to crit, and three that are kind of important just for tuning consistency, so not a huge deal. I'm just going to risk the 0.8%. And then a little bit of bulk is nice depending on your setup. You might find yourself needing a bit, so you can add it if you find that you need it. And then for her skill enhances, it's just max S3 for damage and then S2 for the cooldown. Next up we can look at Rowana, which like I mentioned, we're not dealing with Ray. Rowana is much easier. She's our healer, so you should have her built already anyways because she's such a good unit. But S2 maxed, and I found the S3 cooldown was actually pretty nice as well. And then you do need a little bit of speed, like 190 is nice. Also 100% crit chance is mandatory because of the boss mechanics. And then the rest of the stats just go into defense and HP because she is our primary tank and she will be taking a lot of damage in that front slot. For artifact, I'm going Warhorn because I already have a sustain artifact, I have Bloodstone on my Ian. If you do need some more sustain, you can use Shimadra Staff for this. Increase the healing from her S2 and her S3. Or if you don't have that, you could use Rekos or something, or any healing artifact, really. But Shimatras is definitely the best one. But since I have Bloodstone, I'm just using Warhorn. 
now we can look at the two stripper slots. So these two slots are basically the exact same. There's a lot of units that can go here. I like Ian because of his this flat attack team imprint. Two loca. It's about a 9.5% attack boost since these go into base stats. Or rather, uh, uh, imprints, even percent ones, apply to base stats. They're basically like gear rolls. So this is 9.5% worth attack on loca. And if you have a AoE imprint, it needs to be at least SSS. So it just it has to be max or it won't be as good as Ian. So all of those knock goals that people are using, I'm going to assume aren't SSS. If they are SSS, then that's better than Ian. If you're only SS, then Ian is better. And then the role for these two is you're going to want to strip because you have to use strip twice in the fight right before going into break phase. And then there's also AoEs are nice because you have to dispel stealth. So those are very nice to have. And that is what these both have. Strawsley has two AoEs and a strip. Ian has a strip and an AoE. So we can take a look at Ian first. They both pretty much use the same gear. It's just some speed, 100% crit chance, and then the rest into damage. This damage does end up being kind of mandatory. And you don't need that much bulk anyways. So after you have enough bulk to survive, just put the rest into damage anyways. Because you might as well get the extra damage out. I'm using Bloodstone for sustain. If you don't uh, need Bloodstone because you have Shimadras on Rowana or something, you could just use any sort of team stat boosting artifact like Warhorn. And then I have him in Grace of Growth, but you just need to get this 100% on S3. And this cooldown is also pretty nice. And then the rest of it doesn't really matter, I guess, but damage is damage. And then we also have Straze. Since my Ian is super, super fast, I have Straze a bit slower. You have a lot of wiggle room with your speeds because of Loka. Fenris needs your units to be much, much, much faster and also limits your supports a bit more because you really, really want extra turn. Loka doesn't really care about any of that, which is why neither Straze nor Ian have extra turn. And you can play around with their speeds. There's a lot of different speed setups that work. But Strahd is the same thing, it's just defense, HP, a little bit of bulk to not die. The rest of the stats just go into damage, a bit of speed. And I had a, I have him on Card of Small Miracles, because this is very, very slightly higher flat attack than Warhorn. And then he also has his AoE team attack percent imprint. So, those are the units that I will be using. And we can also take a look at the mechanics. So this one is when you remove blocking barrier, increases exhaustion gauge by 60%. Really, this is just, you're going to get into the phase where she puts this up, and once you remove it, you're in the break phase. It's that simple. Looking at the boss features, having a ranger hero in the back row gives them some stuff. And then when the boss is exhausted, the target granted mastery of sharpshooting, gains maximum fighting spirit at the start of the turn. So this is made for Fenris, which we are not using this because we're using Loka. And the other big one is when there are two or more Earth Elemental heroes on the team, increases attack and speed by 30% for all allies and ignores effect resistance. So even though you need two strips, it's super, super consistent because you ignore Ephra's. And then the two Earth heroes here are going to be Loka and Rowana. You can also quickly look at their skills. I'll go over the mechanics a bit more in the fight itself. So here, let's start with her S1, this one. Hits the front unit, inflicts burn, and then activates an AoE extra attack, which is why... I guess she doesn't hit front, she just hits the highest max HP, which is Rowana, who we have in the front. So her AoE extra attack, which is why we're using Rowana, because she'll just proc the S2 and heal everybody. And it inflicts stigma for two turns. Not a very impactful debuff, so we don't care that we have no cleanse. And also detonates the burn, which is why we need a... Good amount of bulk on Rowana, because she'll be taking a good amount of damage from this burn. And then every once in a while she'll use this, en passant, which gives Queen's Tactics to the unit in the back, and also puts a blocking barrier, the thing that you have to dispel to increase the exhaustion gaze. And you also get Sovereign's Mana, 
And this Sovereign's Mana, just hit her with two strips that are attacking skills, and you'll be able to get rid of it. And once you get rid of this, then you have to blow up the barrier with Loka S3. There's also one more big thing before I talk about the Queen's thing. Is this Mana Restraint? It's like Light Expedition. You can't get any buffs or CR pushes except for the ones that you give yourselves. The difference is you can get healing, but you can't get skill cooldown reduction effects, and you can't dual attack. But this isn't a huge deal because here, Queen's Tactics gives you attack buff at the start of your turn, so Loka will get attack buff, and it also increases the damage of her S3. And one more thing is Loka's S2 gives her attack buff, so you will still be able to get attack buff during the break phase as well. And then we can talk about Harsetti's S3. This just removes all buffs. And then when she has Blocking Barrier, so if you fail to remove Blocking Barrier after she puts it up, it's going to increase her damage dealt. This is going to just straight up one-shot you at some point. Pretty much in Phase 3, unless you have a lot of bulk, you're not going to be able to tank this. So you're definitely going to want to get rid of Blocking Barrier. And then this, it just says she can't counterattack, she always hits. And she always crits, and she gets 10% CR every time you take a turn if she's not exhausted. And she also dispels all debuffs at the start of her turn. As usual, she is immune to a boatload of debuffs. And we can also take a look at this, because in the break phase, which you will see in a little bit, a lot of the break phase revolves around hitting this guy instead of hitting Harsetti, because you don't want to end the break phase too fast. We have this light mana device. After suffering a critical hit by a single attack, it increases the combat readiness of the attacker by 30%, and it is only active when she is in the break phase. So in the normal phase, just ignore him, and then in the break phase, you can start hitting him. And there's also this, the secret technique. This just means that every three times you hit him, he'll become untargetable, which is why we need the AoEs, because you're going to be hitting him the stall in the break phase, and then he's going to stealth, and you use an AoE to remove the stealth assist so you can start hitting him again. There's one more thing we have to talk about, which is this, the mastery of sharpshooting effect that your ranger gets. So when you're in the break phase, if people besides Loka crit, she'll get one stack of target weakness, and this effect does keep on stacking up to 10 times. Uh, one very minor thing is that the first stack can be done with an on-attack skill, actually. So we can do this, and we have our first stack. I think this is just left over from the previous Hall of Trials. But we did our first stack there, and now we can hit this guy. And now we're at 2. So it keeps on going up. And eventually, this stops being linear. So we went from 100 to 200. But at 10, the max stacks, it becomes 8,000%. So you definitely want to hit 10. And when you attack, it'll dispel it. And since we had to use Loka S3 to break the barrier, it's the one cooldown. So you have to stall one turn with S1. And that is why the uh, everything you do right now before Loka takes her turn technically doesn't really matter. You're just waiting for Loka to take her turn and then your 10 stack start. One thing is that this only gets dispelled after actually attacking. And since Loka has an S2, which she has to use to get attack buff, but it is also a non-attack skill. The That is why when you're using Loka compared to Fenris, so we can remove the stacks now. When you're using Loka compared to Fenris, she is much easier to get stacks with because after she uses S2, she'll basically give you almost an entire extra turn to get stacks with. And that is why you can gear your supports much slower and also you don't need extra turns compared to when you are using Fenris. So we can see here very soon. We're going to use S2, and we still have our stacks. The last thing to say about this Mastery of Sharpshooting and Target Weakness thing is when you attack the boss, it increases the weakness gauge by 100%. This is the usual 8 hit break bar, so it'll count for 4 hits. That means that your S1, your stalling turn, has to be on this or you're going to end the break phase way too early. So just make sure that this isn't in the stealth when your Loka takes her first turn. So one big thing about this Harsetti boss fight is that since nothing really matters up until the barrier phase starts, we can just play on auto and we'll be chilling up until that happens. 
you will have a decent amount of RNG in your runs because we have Ignore Ephra's, which is great for consistency, and Harsetti always crits. You can't see our push, can't dual attack, nothing. It's going to be super, super consistent, except for the starting CR RNG, which this is like week 14 of me begging them to remove this from Hall of Trials. But that will make it so that your runs are going to look a little bit different every time, depending on your speed tuning. Because for me, sometimes when I do run, certain units will cut other ones and it'll change things because of the way the break phase works. So you might have a little bit of issues getting super consistent setups every time, but it's not too hard to just play it by eye. So we're in the barrier phase now, got the Sovereign's Mana that we got to strip twice, which is Ian S3 and Strazze S2. And now you've just got the barrier to deal with. So this barrier, you can't see the HP, but it is a barrier that you have to just break. And usually Loka S3 will be enough to break it, but the barrier does grow in size in each phase. And in the third phase, the damage from your Ian and Strazze attacks are actually pretty important. So you definitely want to make sure that you're able to have enough damage to break it in the third phase. Now we're in the break phase, and we're waiting for Loka to get her first turn, because nothing that happens here really matters. If you want to min-max your damage, you can try and set it up so that Ian with attack buff and then Strazze are always the ones that are hitting into Harsetti, while Rowana only hits the doll, but this is not that much extra damage, so it's only if you're pushing for super high scores. Use the AoE to break the stealth. You can see I messed up a little bit here, but it's like a 200k damage loss that I'm too lazy to fix. We use our S2 to get attack buff, and we finally strip the stealth. And because I can't hit Harsetti anymore, and I only have two hits left on the on the add, I use Rowana S3 to skip a turn there, basically, because we can hit 10 stacks even without Rowana critting there. And now Loka will break, or end the break phase rather, and we're into the second phase. So the rest of these phases play out pretty much the same as the first one. It'll be a little bit different because your rotations are going to be a bit different since everybody is in the different CR positions. Though Harsetti does sync to Loka speed because she pushes up after Loka uses S3. So any sort of speed tunings related to Harsetti and Loka will be super consistent. While you also have to deal with the starting CR RNG on the other ones. And then the little ad, you can see he's stealthed right now. And he does remember how many times you've hit him. So if you're on like two out of three stacks, he'll keep that up. So you can hit him a bit during this phase if you want in order to change the number that he's on. If that helps you get through the break phase later. Better. Also here, since my Loka moves before the Sovereign Mana is removed, I use S2 for the CR push. Depending on your speeds, you might not be able to get a turn before Harsetti uses S3 if you don't use that S2 with Loka. And then the rest of the run is not much to say, so I'll just let it play out and I'll see you at the end. Ibon Oh, 
전투 모드 전환. 용기를 가져야 해. 어디? 짓밟아 드리죠. 강화 단계 3세. 여러분은 뒤로 물러서세요. 절망을 받아들여라. 이번엔 잘해야 하는 무섭구나. 재미있구나. 그 다가오는 빨간 눈여서지 않으신 절망의 끝에서 시작되는 희망이 모두에게 깃들기를. 이제 시작입니다. 긴 시간이 다가오는군. 물러서지 않으신다면 어디? 전투 모드 전환. 음, 난 이런 거 별로 난 한눈 만들. 최강 혼돈을 선사하지. 짓밟아 드리죠 한 단계 더 강화합니다 여러분은 뒤로 물러서세요 다는 도망치지 않아 성스러운 빛이 모두를 구원하고 절망을 받아들여라 무의미한 정 짓밟아 드리죠 할수 있을까? 용기를 가져야 해. 셔. 필멸의 시간이 다가오는군. 공포에 물들 시간이 다 존재해. 영원한 이 시간. 전투 모드 전환. 다는 도망치지 않아요. 셔. 제게 싸움을 거신 건가요? 버프 상태를 부여합니다. 짓밟아 드리죠. 이번엔 잘해야 한다. 이런 일에 자신 없지만 이제 시작입니다. 후! 절망을 받아들여라. 전투 모드 전환. 물러서지 않으신다면 어디? 음, 난 이런 거 별로야. 그래? 어리석은 선택의 말이 이토록 무섭다 And that's it for me for this Hall of Trials rotation. I was thinking about auto teams and it is not pretty because the way these mechanics work, you have to do two strips and then you have to use your S3 to break barrier. And then you have to use your S3 again to hit Harseti after getting all the stacks. And with the thing where if you attack, it counts for four hits in the break phase with your Ranger. It's just there's so much tuning involved that I think you'll be better off just doing one or two phases with the manual comp and you'll probably achieve the same result and make top 5% if you're doing two phases. So auto team does not look too hot. If anybody figures anything out though, that can safely get into the top 5% or 10%, then let me know. But 
At a glance, it doesn't seem too feasible. For the ranks, hopefully the Ducks knock this crit set and swapping to a better attack percent imprint. Or, I not, yeah. Flat attack, but worth 9.5% attack imprint. Helps push people's scores up. I expect to see myself drop out of the top three in a few days. But we'll see where this goes. More free to play options, because since Strauss did ML5, Ian is giving us a lot of attack percent imprint already. The free to play option is, I guess, not cool, because you should probably have her from a selector by now. But really, any ranger like this, he loses souls using Flan. There's somebody down here who was losing Lua earlier. Any, really, any strip works in this slot if they also have AoE. It's just, uh, Ian 3 star. And a lot of people have Strazi's, they're using him, but Nockwool could also slot into the Strazi role and be fine. So something like Loka, Ian, Nockwool, Rowana would be more or less a free to play team because we've had so many selectors that Nockwool and Rowana are basically free to play units. So good luck with the haul, and I will see you guys for the next rotation.